Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. I know we have a problem with our slave history, but it is what it is. And we have to move beyond that. And oh yeah, I see somebody's been eating well these days. I, Tariq Nasheed is funny. He was like, why was Kamala Harris dressed like Mr. Brown? <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sister girl, honey. <laughs> and look at the Secret Service agent with the shades on trying to look around. He's taking care of business. And, you know, this you saw the sheriff read this prepared statement. This woman won't even look at the stuff her own staff prepares, and she gets up there and grins like a stupid hyena and embarrasses the hell out of the whole country. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, she, she you know what this looks like. This looks like one of those nineteen seventy spoof movies. <laughs> what is it? I'm gonna get you, sucker. <laughs> you know. Um. This was a hip hop. This was a barbecue slash party at at the observatory where she resides, um, in celebration of hip hop fifty. We got and it. Look, those were the only Negroes in the whole capital because they'd have run most of the rest of them out of there when they gentrified. Now it ain't nothing. It ain't Chocolate City anymore. It's Rainbow Queen Heaven. And by the way, that's the problem with why we don't get any representation. Black Caucus has gone rainbow with a little shadow down at the bottom. So they once were black. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, that's their business to be rainbow. That's politics. That's First Amendment. More power to them. But the problem is, is our Black Caucus. Well, this is your frat brother right rainbow here. Rainbow Caucus. They, they mind. We don't. I didn't make him. They they wave them in now. They don't get made like they used to. <laughs> Your frat brother all got his frat hat on. We would have turned his ass out. Alpha, would, what is it? Alpha have, Kappa Alpha? What is it? it? No, a, a Alpha Kappa Alpha. That's the women's sorority. Oh, what's, what is your sorority? I mean, your fraternity? Alpha Phi Alpha. Yeah, Alpha Phi Alpha. He got his Alpha Phi Alpha hat on with Keisha Lance Bottoms, the former mayor of Atlanta. Fat Joe, the Puerto Rican. We have this tether up here, Lovey. Of course, he's with Kamala Harris. Um, oh, well, they just happy niggers that they got to meet the head house, uh, <laughs> third floor house winch. Ain't that something? Oh, it, it ain't even a real one. Just came in and faked it out. Came in from Jamaica. Her parts were made in India. What Tariq Nice said, Kamala Harris, 50th anniversary hip-hop party was basically tether palooza <laughs> well look at this is the woman that said she used to smoke weed while she was in the dormitories listening to tupac at the time she was in the dormitories tupac was nine years old that is have a lie through her teeth come on now <laughs> um <laughs> i mean look he was a brilliant young artist, but at nine years old, he wasn't selling CDs and uh, uh, what? 45s and 33 and a third or uh, eight tracks up there where Howard is in DC. Uh uh. Right, right, right. Uh, hey. 
What I wanted to um, bring up next. I hate fakes. No, she is. She is um, very phony because I, <laughs> she laughs a lot. And um, I said earlier that she wear three different, she has three different personalities. When she went over to Ghana, she was a Pan-Africanist. When um, the Prime Minister of India, Moody, visited the White House, she was Indian. And when she doing the hip hop, she that's when she want to put on her African American. Um, hey, look, the only race you can be <laughs> by claiming it is black. Nobody else allows that. I mean, what do they call a half breed between black and white? It ain't white. What do they call a half breed between Native American? and black it ain't native american what do they call if it's a half breed uh between black and hispanic unless it's from puerto rico it ain't hispanic if it's a half breed between hmm. a black and an asian is it asian uh-uh it's black so how come she's supposed to be an asian with the asians i want to um See, because she's front. They I wanna, know what time that is. That's a good way to get scholarships because they have them out there and you just go on in and don't tell anybody what your origins are. And black folk are so right. unsophisticated. Wanna, they think anybody that's got a suntan has got to be one of them. It ain't so. See, I, she's claiming that she's got one great grandmother who is a black woman. Well, if you look at her, she isn't straight black anyway, so that would dilute it by at least one half, and that would switch it from one-eighth to one-sixteenth. And then if you look at it, it's maybe a quarter, so that would be one-thirty-second. And guess what? Until the 1930s, even a black person in America could be declared white if they made an application, and that's all they had in them. There are a whole lot of descendants of those, but we don't even get there because the daddy says, that ain't a black woman that was a Hindu house servant, and they ain't nobody recent left from Africa in the family. There's Irish and Hindu, and that's it. I want to play this um, video of her explaining about that law she passed when she was DA in California to lock up parents. I would not be standing here were it not for the education I received. And I know many of, many of us will say the same thing. And I believe a child going without an education is tantamount to a crime. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. Well, this was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> and frankly, my staff went bananas. They Why is this hyena laughing? It ain't funny. It's not. It's not. Or very you, concerned. You families and you don't have any solutions. You don't have any counseling or investigation to see if they're transportation. Right. Problems. And you just go in and lock up and then you, your sleazy ass is up there grinning and giggling like a hyena. All of the hell you cause. And see, I was in California when this was happening. Mm -hmm. At least part time, back and forth between there and Memphis. My last in-laws were from San Francisco. Last father-in-law was a traffic engineer for BART, Bay Area, uh, Bay Area Rapid Transit Authority. You know, so, yeah, I know what time that is. This heifer, you know what else she did? To get rid of crime, you know what she was doing? If a place got robbed too many times, held up, stuck up, Instead of going after the criminals, she was trying to close the business down so they wouldn't be an attractive target. Mm. Ain't that dumbass. Um, let me finish playing this. We didn't know at the time whether I was going to have an opponent in my reelection race. But I said, look, I'm done. This is a serious issue, and I've got a little political capital, and I'm going to spend some of it. And this is what we did. We recognized that in that initiative... As a prosecutor in law enforcement, I have a huge stick. 
the school district has got a carrot. Let's work in tandem around our collective objective and goal, which is to get those kids in school. So to that end, on my letterhead, now let me tell you something about my letterhead. When you're the DA of a major city in this country, usually the job comes with a badge. And there is often an artistic rendering of said badge on your stationery. So I sent a letter out on my letterhead to every parent in the school district, outlining the connection that was statistically proven between elementary school truancy, high school dropouts, who will become a victim of crime, and who will become a perpetrator of crime. We sent it out to everyone. A friend of mine actually called me and he said, Kamala, my wife got the letter. She freaked out. She brought all the kids into the living room, held up the letter, said, if you don't go to school, Kamala's going to put you and me in jail. Yes, we achieved intended effect. That was the end of it. That's revolting. Very. Meanwhile, there was a problem up in the Bay Area by transportation problems children parents were having, amongst other things, when the kids were supposed to be in school was often at a time that made it impossible almost for an adult to get them to where they were supposed to be going to school and across those bridges, Golden Gate Bridge, Oakland Bay Bridge, and all that heavy traffic going down the California style freeways into San Francisco or to Berkeley, Oakland, uh, Palo Alto, et cetera, et cetera. It was a real live mess. Now, yeah, there was some tacky stuff, but you have to put this in context. This witch in San Francisco was on plea bargains for misdemeanor possession of marijuana in San Francisco passing out the stiffest sentences for simple possession in the whole of the United States of America. If you were black, if you were something else, you know, well, it's just weed, go on about your business. But for black folk, she was stuffing them in the penitentiaries as hard as she could. I don't believe this lying hyena right here that she had anything good about it. She was just trying to get rid of as many black folk as she could because that's what she was about. There was some creepy chick that my ex hired to be a business manager. That woman embezzled a million and a half dollars from me and from other celebrities embezzled more than $15 million. Well, most of the stuff was up in the Bay Area. So under California law, everything got transferred up there. This witch let this woman plead out to stealing $35,000, not $15 million. And she got a sentence that wound up being five years in the penitentiary or jail with four and a half years suspended. She wound up sitting on a bench outside of women's detention for, get this, six and a half hours. And that's all she suffered as punishment for stealing $15 million, thanks to this helper. And it took her five years to deal with it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's like, come on. What kind of incompetent jerk are you? This woman is so bad that she even had six families of murder victims, all homicides committed by the same person, jumping her about, will you, for goodness sakes, let the man plead guilty instead of you trying to grandstand for politics? This has been going on for years. The man wants to cop out to life without possibility of parole, and you're sitting up here trying to be cute. And she didn't back off of this until she got elected state attorney general. So they got all these victims of crime trying to get on her. Like, would you back off of this? Right. You know, this is causing a lot of grief to a lot of people. We aren't interested in your ambitions. We want justice. All right. And see, she's like that. See, and, and what was she laughing about? 
it's the laugh and it's like is that a nervous laugh or is are you just really laughing in our faces like yeah i got the power to make your life miserable and i'm gonna do it because i'm you know just evil like that so ah, look what i'm doing to the diggers they're all inferior our great oh what was his name oh mahatma gandhi he used to call them coffers yeah, that's the N-word down in South Africa that our great leader used to use. Oh, that's what I'm really doing in the coffers real tough. 